Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to have a look at another collaboration beer and this is one that I think will be quite interesting actually. So this one is half Swedish, half American and for the Swedish side of things we're going to head up towards Gothenburg once again. Utebor as you would say in Swedish and uh, we're going to return to one of my favourite Swedish breweries actually. Anything that these guys seem to try tends to be very good these days. So for this one we are going to go back to Dugas Bruggery and this is the Mad Crush Fluid, which is a double IPA coming in at 7.5% ABV. So just on the very edge of where you could consider um, a double IPA, I guess. I would normally consider a double IPA to be of 8% in honesty. But this particular beer is a collaboration with Interbra Ales and Spirits from Brooklyn over in New York. And as we know, there's a hell of a lot of good breweries over in the New York area at the moment. And they seem to have just kind of sprung up over the last four years or something like that. Um, but this is another one that apparently is very well regarded but I've never actually encountered these guys before so really curious to see how this one turns out when I head over to the States again um, in August 2020 or September I forget exactly when it is um, but when I head over there again I will make sure I check out some of these breweries in the New York area. I've got a few invites and things like that actually from reviews that I've done so I'll need to take those up when I get out there next time. But definitely cool to encounter another brewery from that New York area and return to one of my favourite Swedish craft breweries as well. So looking forward to this one as always and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, it's the link to my other reviews that I've done from Dugas Brewery before and a link that will take you to my future reviews that hopefully I could do from Interbrook Eels and Spirits. Very first time I'm encountering them, like I said. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for for all the American beers that I'm reviewing, those are constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Dugas Brewery first off then, on to my brewery notes. So Douglas Bruggery, as I've told you before, are based in Landvetter on the outskirts of Gothenburg here in Sweden. But the brewery was established back in 2005 in Mullendal by Mikael Engström Duga. And a few years previous to this, Mikael had actually met an Englishman who was selling second-hand breweries. And this really got Mikael thinking about how it would be very cool to have his own uh, brewery and brew his own beer. So he studied the Swedish alcohol laws quite a lot, visited other breweries to learn things and started buying equipment to put together his own brewery which culminated in the opening of their first brewery that they had in Mullendal in 2005 which was just a little bit to the south of uh, Gothenburg if I remember correctly. But by 2009 the brewery had outgrown this original brewery and then moved up to Landvetter closer to the airport which is out to the kind of east if I remember correctly of Gothenburg as well but they moved in there in 2010. The older brewery had a capacity of only 1,500 hectolitres of beer per year, however the new brewery started with a capacity of around 7,000 hectolitres of beer per year and it's been more than doubled in recent years. They went through quite a big expansion over 2016 and 2017 from what I understand. But over the years the brewery have become very well known for fruit beers and sour beers and stuff like this and recently they've also been investing quite heavily in a barrel ageing programme as well and also producing some more IPAs and I have to say that the IPAs that Dugas are doing at the moment are very very good actually. So the Crush series and the Fresh series tend to be really good. I, you know, you will see uh, a couple of those reviewed over the next little while, hopefully. But the brewery are also one of the co-owners of the two Brewers Beer Bars in Gothenburg as well. So if you want to kind of visit the kind of unofficial Dugas Tap Room, if you like, then go and check out the uh, the the Brewers Beer Bar up there. You will see an out and about video for the Trade Longaton one at some point. I still need to edit that together, but you will see that publishing in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. The other thing to note about Dugas Brewery as well is that Mikael's daughter is also the. Um, 
one of the owners of Electric Nurse Brewery, which I didn't know until I was speaking to the guys in Brewer's Bar as well. So um, yeah, really interesting to find that out. But Dugas are definitely one of the Swedish breweries that you should check out. These guys are doing some excellent stuff at the moment. And it doesn't really matter what style they do, it always tends to turn out pretty well. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Dugas Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can uh, check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that they've done. Dugas are a very prolific brewery and one thing I did notice is that on their Untapped page it says they've only produced 41 different beers and you know I can tell you straight away that is definitely wrong. There's no way that Dugas Brewery have only produced 41 different beers so yeah you can still have a look at them there. There's a whole list of these things on the Dugas website actually. But anyway on to the American side of this beer then, the second part of the brewery notes. So Interbra Ales and Spirits, these guys are based in Brooklyn in New York as I mentioned earlier and they were founded back in 2015 but opened in September of 2016. The two main people behind this company are Laura Dierks and Jesse Ferguson. So Jesse is the brewer and he previously worked at Carton Brewing over in New Jersey and also other half in New York as well. Laura meanwhile has a background in management and communications but she had experience within the local craft spirit scene in the New York area but they put their work a lot of work into renovating their home that they have just now. It's on Grand Street they installed a, a quite a, an advanced brew kit there. It seems to be like a sort of all-in-one thing that can, you know, do the cooling, the mixing, the mash tun, all of these kind of things in one sort of vessel. By from what I was reading, and um, but they also raised fifteen thousand. Uh, dollars on Kickstarter to get a, a pilot kit that they can do as well to release special beers and things too. Um, but over the last few three years, they've been continuing to grow. They've got a tap room on site at the brewery as well. There's pictures of that on the website. And as of November 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced a total of 233 different beers, according to Untapped. And they're currently producing gin in their still as well, hence the name Interbra Ales and Spirits. I was curious to see if they were doing a little bit of bourbon and things like that. But by the looks of it, their um, little premises that they have is kind of, it's just a small sort of industrial unit by the looks of it. So I'm guessing, you know, with whiskey, you do need to age that in barrels for quite a long time. So probably they don't have the space to actually make bourbon at the moment but by all accounts these guys are a very highly regarded brewery at the moment doing some very nice IPAs and things like that from what I gather and if you look through the list of beers they've done on Untapped there's quite a, a variety of different styles in there as well so by the looks of it this is another brewery that I need to check out when I make it over to uh, to the U to New England once again in uh, well, that being like August, September 2020. So keep an eye out for those videos over the next year or so. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Interbra Ales and Spirits for the moment. That was all I was able to find on them, really. It wouldn't let me into Draft Mag because of the, the territory and things like that. There was a bigger article on them there. I couldn't get into that. Um, but that was all I was able to find out from reading a few different things about this brewery. But um, yeah, if you want to learn more, check out the brewery website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram, all the usual stuff. And you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all of the those different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So this particular beer, I've got notes on exactly what it is as well. This one is um, a 7.5% double IPA. And apparently it's a mashup of uh, Dugas's Crush, which you've seen me review on the channel before, and Interbra's Mad Fat Fluid, which is supposed to be really nice. I'm sure that was named in like the top 100 new IPAs in America or something like that recently. Um, but this particular beer is hopped with Mosaic, Centennial and Nelson Sovian. So yeah, it should be really nice. Let's get rid of the brewery notes then and we will get on with the tasting of this beer. So as you can see, the artwork on this one is kind of typical of what you'd expect of Dugas Brewery. This one is very similar to what you'll find. The Dugas Black kind of trim there. It says on the side here, a collaborative effort between us at Dugas and New York Buddies, uh, our, our New York Buddies at Interbra. A straight mashup of our core double IPA and one of their double IPAs, the best of both worlds from both sides of the pond. Haze for days. So um, yeah, plain golden bottle cap on this one. I do wish that Dugas would get black bottle caps and you know, and um, put their name on them and things. That would be a nice little touch. But there you can see on the side here, there is the Interbra Ales and Spirits symbol there. But um, yeah, let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the taste. And I'm very curious to see how this particular beer turns out. I always get excited when it comes to um, new releases from Dugas Brewery because they always tend to turn out really quite nicely actually. So yeah, let's get this guy out and into the glass. One of the things I would say to those of you watching in the States about Dugas Brewery 
Um, Dugas, I would argue, are one of the best coffee stout producers in the world. Like, um, they, you know, they really got me into coffee stouts, and um, I've I'm, I've tried coffee stouts from Australia, Japan, America, and things like that, but. You know, these guys are very, very good when it comes to that style. So if you are coming over to Sweden and they've got one of their coffee stouts in there, I highly recommend that you have a little look at that because those are some of the best beers that you'll find from Dugas. But the other ones, the double IPAs, the the fresh and the crush and stuff like that are just beautiful beers actually. So um, yeah, as you can see with this one, and as you'd expect from uh, an IPA these days, this one is quite hazy. If I shine the light through it, it's definitely more of a kind of hazy yellow colour. You could see that there is a about a quarter finger of a frothy white head on this one. That's just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer though. One or two big bubbles were sticking towards the side of the glass. You can see a few bubbles heading up towards the bottom of the head there, but overall there's nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is an IPA and of course everyone is brewing these New England hazy IPAs these days. I'd love to actually see Dugas Brewery have a go at one of the um, you know, an old kind of school West Coast, to Sierra Nevada Torpedo style West Coast IP. I think that would be a really interesting project for them. But yeah, more of a yellow colour this one compared to some of the other ones which can be a little bit orange. And I would say that this one, while it is a bit hazy, you will find ones uh, that are a little bit more hazy than this. Some of the ones I've tried from Chicago so far have just been, you know, like soup basically. They've looked a little bit like corn soup or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean overall um, a nice looking beer this one, nothing overly surprising about it in terms of the appearance. So let's take a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah, that comes across really nicely. What you're going to notice about this one straight away, and it is kind of apparent when you open up the bottle, that um, this beer, it comes across as like a very juicy IPA. One of the things I would say about the Dugas IPAs is that it was quite cool actually because they started to use a little bit of rice in the malt base and it gave the, the malt base just that little bit of oiliness and it was a really interesting touch and I encountered that first with some of the craft beers I was trying from Japan actually. So that was always an interesting thing to um, to come across actually. I always enjoyed that with the um, the, some of the Japanese craft beers because a lot of them were sake brewers and then started brewing craft beer as well but with this one um, you can smell a little bit of that in here too I think I wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee bit of rice in the malt base with this especially when it's based on crush which I'm sure was one of them but it says on the side here it's just um, barley, oat malt and wheat malt that's in this so yeah interesting actually but Again, I've told you an interesting point, I think, about the, the Dugas IPAs. But yeah, you'll notice with this one straight away, you can smell that nice white bready wheat thing. The wheat in this one comes across as quite pungent, actually. It does seem to have a little bit of that kind of astringency to it. Um, you can definitely get the OT creaminess in there as well. And um, to be honest with you, I would wonder, just going from the level of citrusy quality in this aroma, I'd wonder if there's a little bit of like acidulated malt or um, something like that in here as well. But in fairness, when you take the aroma in a bit more deeply, it does come across as just that little bit kind of more smooth and things too. So um, yeah, nice malt base on this one. Maybe a little touch of a biscuity quality to this one too. Maybe there's a wee bit of a Pilsner or a Carapils malt in there. So um, yeah, I've noticed that's another trend in the with the IPAs in Sweden too, is adding Pilsner malt and things to them these days, which works quite nicely. Um, in terms of the green side of the hops with this beer, I would say this one definitely has a good little bit of floral aromaticity to it. Nelson Sovine, while it does have those lovely juicy white green grapey kind of notes, it is actually quite pungent with its uh, floral aromaticity as well. But you've got Centennial in here too, um, which is usually, it gives you that lovely kind of lemony quality. So this beer has a lot of green, juicy green grapes, um, a bit of tangerine as well from the mosaic. So you can really smell that in here, but the, the green side of the hops definitely leans a little bit more towards that kind of floral, aromatic side of things rather than the um, the grassy side. There is a little bit of grassiness to this one, but mainly quite big and floral. There's a wee touch of earthiness too, which is coming from the mosaic, I think. Um, but yeah, on the fruity side of things, as I mentioned, um, a nice little bit of a tangerine orange in there, a little bit of a kind of white creamy grape. Those take a little bit of a back seat in my mind and it's the centennial that pushes its way out a little bit more um, with the, the big kind of lemony sherberry sort of notes. So yeah, um, quite an interesting aroma this one but when it's a mix up of two um, but it's a mix up of two different beers, I think it will be really quite interesting. What I'd be curious to know is whether they've actually blended the two beers separately and then are 
brewed the two beers separately rather and then blended them or whether they've um, you know actually just taken the recipes and then brewed the thing as a separate beer. It doesn't actually say that to be honest with you um, but it did say on Untapped that it was a sort of mashup of these two beers so probably what they've done is they've used the same mash and then used the same kind of hops but mixed them all together and stuff like this. Um, I'd be curious to know that but yeah let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. As I always say they'll take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma but this one is the Mad Crush Fluid a double IPA at 7.5% from Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden and uh, Interbra Ales and Spirits from Brooklyn over in New York. A, a, a kind of mashup of Crush from Dugas and uh, Mad Fat Fluid from uh, Interbra. Let's get stuck into this one. This one was released incidentally as part of the Small Parties in uh, November 2019 here in Sweden. Let's go. Yeah, that's really nice. It really is a good beer, that. Um, first impression then, it comes across as very clean. Um, and I've noticed that with these Dugas beers. They come, the, the, the Dugas beers have this big oily, the New England IPAs have this nice oily wetness to them, I have to say. And I think it really works quite well with this one, actually. This gets a thumbs up from me. This is another nice beer from Dugas. Yeah, I like how this um, goes together. Um, it's not the thickest and biggest beer you're going to get from Dugas, but it still has um, a lot of the kind of flavour elements there. I mean, if I was if I was blind tasting this one, I do reckon I would be able to tell that this was a, a Dugas beer. But yeah, let's try and break the flavour of this one down. Then this is quite a nice, big, oily, sort of hazy IPA, if you like. But the one thing that we have to know about these beers as well is that when it's a West Coast Swedish IPA, these are a little bit different to the American take on the hazy IPA, if you like. They, they come across as a bit lighter in the mouth, and a bit cleaner, I think. So yeah, kind of like a West Coast Swedish IPA, this one. But yeah, so. Straight away with this beer then, you're going to feel a nice little bit of that smooth, white bready, wheaty quality. That blankets the middle of the tongue. But it is very light, it's not the thickest of wheaty qualities you're going to come across. On top of that though, you start to get a little bit of the kind of oaty creaminess in there, and then in the very centre of your palate you've got a nice kind of um, biscuity malt to this one as well, which is good. But yeah. That's a really quite nice um, malt base on this one. Very light and very drinkable, actually. You will find some uh, Dugas spears that feel a little bit thicker and even more oily than this one, I would say. But um, the malt base in this one is just kind of a light... Um, it really is just quite a light, drinkable IPA, this one. This is probably one of the lightest double IPAs that you're going to come across, actually. But some people would debate whether 7.5% is the cutoff for... Um, a double IP or whether it would be 8%, you know, we can talk about that all day, but to me this one is, this feels like the kind of single IPAs that I've had from Dugas before rather than the double IPA, that's the one thing I would pick it up on, but the way that the malt base comes across in this one is quite nice and it is quite typical Dugas as well actually. But yeah, that's a nice beer actually. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you can pick up a nice little bit of that earthiness there from the um, from mosaic. As you move further forward along the sides of the tongue though it becomes a little bit more kind of floral and aromatic and it's definitely more floral rather than piney and resinous or anything like that. Um, but yeah, a nice little bit of a floral aromatic spice on this one and I think that would be a mixture of the Centennial and the Nelson Sovine. And then round the front curve of the palate, it's just that little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy. And then behind the front curve of the tongue, of course, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So yeah, for me, this one, um, it is kind of what I was expecting, to be honest with you. Um, it's the fruit. A lot of the fruit. There isn't too much going on at the back of that um, 
oily part of the beer. It's kind of more as you kind of come forward on that the front of your tongue. You'll get the tangerine oranges from the mosaic. Um, you'll get, um, and as you're pushing towards the front of the tongue, actually, you'll get the kind of Nelson sauvine green white grapey kind of notes out of this beer and those really linger into the aftertaste and you can feel a little bit more of the sweetness from the malt base coming out as well and it's really nice how that kind of white greeny grapey quality mixes in with that perhaps if you go to the back of the oily bubble that's where you're getting some of the the more pungent lemony qualities from the the centennial in this one but um it's got a good balance this beer the lemony kind of qualities go well together with the sort of floral aromatic side of the beer whereas the tangerine and green grapey notes, um, they sort of mix in well with the sort of sweeter, malty, oily kind of side of this beer as well. But perhaps as you go further into the aftertaste as well, you might notice on the very tip of your tongue just a teeny little bit of blueberry, which is one of the kind of complexities that you can always pick up from, uh, from Mosaic as well. So that's a really interesting note to take away from that beer as well. It's just that little presence of blueberry there but overall this is a really quite nice um, IPA this one and um, as I say I would debate whether it's a double IPA I think this is it to me compared to the other Dugas Spears I've had it does feel a little bit more like the regular IPAs but I mean regardless of that it is a nice beer and that is the main thing we can sit and debate about exactly what sub style this one is all day but the main question should be whether it's a good beer and it does tick that box for me but also cool to encounter uh, my first beer from Interbra as well. I think I'll need to I'll need to remember that name and make sure that I uh, I go and see if I can get a hold of one or two of their beers when I'm over in the New York area as well. That would definitely be quite good fun actually to try some of these different beers. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one on the on the flavour side of things. In terms of mouthfeel, um, I would say that this is a mid-bodied beer. Yeah, the carbonation is very smooth. The mouthfeel. It is kind of quite oily. Um, I would say, yeah, quite an oily mouthfeel, but at the same time a bit of wetness in there. In terms of IBUs, I think we're talking maybe about 40 with this one, somewhere in that kind of region. Uh, malt base overall, it's quite it's quite smooth, but it's got a little bit of sweetness and oily quality to it as well, and it's quite a juicy, fruity note to this beer too. I would say there is a little bit of an oily quality to the fruity side of things as well. But overall, a really nice... Um, a really nice take on uh, the IPA, quite similar to the other Dugas ones I've had before, but a little bit more along the lines of a single IPA, but definitely makes me a little bit curious about what Interbro have in their own range as well. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one then. I almost forgot to do the, uh, the mouthfeel of this beer, but a really nice beer this, and uh, I'm sure you'll be seeing more Dugas reviews and hopefully some more Interbro reviews over the next little while. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Dugas and from Interbro as well, and yeah, hopefully you'll see more reviews from both of these guys soon. Thank you again for watching, check out my social media, and I will catch you guys very soon. This one was the Mad Crush Fluid, a collaboration between Dugas Bravery here in Gotham, or in Gothenburg here in Sweden, and Interbro Ales and Spirits from Brooklyn in New York over in America. Until the next time, it's Slanja just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, skull, cheers.